And here we are on the Metal Voice. You know, we're, we're, we're going all the way to Ireland. We're going all the way to Scotland. Mm-hmm. Cayman, my favorite Scotsman. And Eamon, my favorite Irishman. Guys, what is going on? Good day to you in fair Canada there. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right. What are we going to do today? Okay. Yesterday, me and Giles, we spoke about the new single by Bruce Dickinson. Um, today, I wanted to get dive a little more deeper into the song. There has been some new details that have been released from yesterday. There's a release date, actually. There's a track listing. There's a lot of fan comments that I want to talk to you guys about and get your perspective on this. I'm pretty shocked at some of the comments, but we'll get into that. So details, fan comments, and let's just take apart this song and what you guys thought of it, because I know you guys are Maiden fanatics. Mm -hmm. Eamon, maybe more of a uh, perspective from a musical standpoint and came in more of a perspective from a, I don't know, Maiden Bruce Dickinson fanatic perspective. So we'll start things off. Guys, overall, just quickly, uh, you know, Eamon, tell me overall, you know, you heard it for the first time. What'd you think? Um, My first thought when I first saw that video and he quoted William Blake, and then you throw in the fact it's a, a concept piece, the Mandrake Project was, oh my God, we got a follow up to the chemical wedding. Uh, obviously, we had turning of souls in between times, but chemical wedding, I think most fans will agree of Bruce's solo work was his high point. And to me, straight away, it was like, this is exciting. This is a really exciting project. And yeah, as you said briefly, uh, really loved the song. And the more I'm listening to it, the more I'm enjoying it. All right, came in briefly. Let's we'll just start yeah. things off. First impression, you know. Uh, I, I was just uh, like like he even said about the William Blake quote that made me smile because he's he's always pro William William Blake. Uh, I I really liked it. I I think I was expecting considering it's been such a long time. It's been nearly twenty years since since his last album, since Telling Your Souls. I was kind of open for a continuation of of that something a bit more in your face a bit more bombastic and this this is a lot more kind of uh it's darker and it's slower and there's a lot more going on than just as it comes across at first you know it's there's a lot going on uh i think it's quite muddy some in some ways, like Bruce's vocals are not the the focus or the main show. It's all the elements are the keys are there. The the guitar is is obviously driving the song, but it's not really so in your face. And I think that's kind of what I was hoping for. I was really wanting it more. More more dramatic, I, I suppose. Oh, my God. I think it was very dramatic. Okay, we'll pause right there. Yeah. Eamon, all right. I talked to you about this before. I go, I was really having trouble understanding the tuning. Of, and just, we're going to get very high level here. We're not going to get too technical here. I go, is this like a minor key song? Is it switching from a major to a minor? Is this standard tuning? Just quickly, explain the sort of, the so, sort of song structure from a musical perspective so far that you can hear. Okay, so um, Chemical Wedding, they famously tuned down. I think it was drop D. They may have went even further, which is where you take your standard tuning as an E and you drop that down two notes and it gives you a heavier sound. I sat down with my acoustic guitar to learn this and I yeah. immediately went to D and then hit the note and was like, that's totally wrong. It's actually tuned to a B. So that's going way, 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 way down. So the obvious thing then to me was like, it's not tuned down. It's a seven string guitar he's using, a la Steve Vai, uh, Korn, those guys made uh, famous the seven string. So that's where you get that really low, that chugging, dun, 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 that chuggy riff comes from a B. So I believe that's a standard tuned guitar the entire way throughout, but he's chugging on a on a B there on a seven string. Um, Fascinating. Riff. So yeah, because the, the chorus, um, it's just uh, to me that's just a B minor, an A, an F sharp minor, and an E. So you don't have to tune down or whatever for that. So it sounds like he's using a seven string, which gives it that really dark, heavy chugging sound. So 
arguably heavier than chemical wedding. Let, let's see what the other musicians think about that comment. I think that's a very fascinating comment right there. Thank you very much, Eamon. Cayman, when you compare this song to other Bruce's solo material, what, what, what song do you connect with? You say this new song sounds like this song from Bruce's catalog yeah, of his there's, solo there's material. A, there's a lot of kind of elements of uh, Trumpets of Jericho, of Chemical Wedding, and the Book of Thel, which is kind of like the centerpiece of, of that. Well, a really big song off that album. Uh, I think, like, thematically, it's also got a lot in common with Tears of the Dragon as well. The whole song is kind of about, like, we've been through turmoil, it's the end of the world, and he, I'm back, I'm here with <laughs> you all, you know what I mean? It's all from his perspective of this is what I've been through, and here I am again, and I, uh, you're with me, and you can take what you want from it, and that I'm rising with the shadows and I'm coming out of the night and I'm the sun and it's all these elements, it's nature. This is the kind of stuff Bruce writes about on Accident of Birth as well, Dark Side of Aquarius, all these kind of... Uh, so thematically and musically you're yeah, saying, right? Yeah. So that the, the two together, right? So yeah. the theme of this, uh, you know, afterglow of Rag Ragnarok sounds... Ragnarok. Ragnarok sounds similar to these songs thematically and musically yep. like a riff uh, that, that we we're talking about aquarius. this yesterday riff based sort of uh you know chugging along right that side of aquarius has that exact same kind of uh chugging riff roisy uh elements to it i think it it does a really good, and it also has that kind of doomy feel of believo and stuff of of turning of souls there's that creeping darkness to it, you know, contrasted with the, the big anthemic choruses like like on Tears of the Dragon. That's all right, all right. smart. Eamon, vocally, when you're when you're listening to uh this song versus let's say uh another a maiden song or the way the way Bruce sings his maiden work versus he's singing this song, what what would you say is different and or and, and maybe the same? Well, before I talk about that, I just want to pick up on something you were both saying about musically being, uh, you know, thematically. Um, yes. I think you're all right. You're right. It's all about Roy Z. You know, it's the Roy Z sound, and that meshes with Bruce Dickinson as it has done since, uh, not even Balls to Picasso, really since um, Accident of Birth. So now we'll have four albums where it's identifiable as Bruce Dickinson. Very different. It's all down tuned. Uh, and like that's one great thing I would say about Bruce's solo career since Accident of Birth is you know it's him like the first album was kind of classic Rocky the second one was all over the place third one Skunk Works amazing album um, but totally different again so that's now we, yeah <laughs> so now this we, this, oh. this is it's it, this song is a combination of all these guys right here definitely, absolutely definitely right. found his signature sound. Yeah, so uh, to answer your question then, vocally, um, I think it's what the first thing I will say is about the production. There's much more production to the album. Uh, look, to answer your question about what does it sound like compared to Maiden stuff, it's Bruce. He's giving it his all. He's singing like totally from the chest and and giving it uh, giving it his full. Um, I, I find, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw this at you, I find on the bridge, he's kind of doing that operatic maiden mm -hmm. stuff, whereas on the verse and the chorus, it's Bruce Dickinson solo, sort of just, you know, it could have been U2 Bono singing those verses uh, and that chorus, right? I mean, it's a big I would say, chorus. Uh, you, you would never get that kind of bright, it's such an op optimistic chorus, you would never get that kind Dynamic. of... Dynamic. Che cheery, it's upbeat. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the chorus is really like positive in a way that, that Maiden Maiden have that kind do have that kind of uplift but there's a real contrast between it being like a balls out metal riff into that chorus I think that's the most interesting part of the whole song mm -hmm. yeah it is it is uplifting um, musically but I think I think vocally the, the, the most 
interesting thing for me is the production of the vocals. You've got a lot of atmosphere going on. There's reverb on there. Um, the vocals are layered as well. Now, that's not to say that that kind of thing doesn't happen on Maiden, but Maiden, it's recorded a lot drier. They they obviously jam together and they do it. I this- like that, the production of a lot drier from Ma- Caveman versus Roy Z, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think Roy Roy's obviously yeah. a, a different producer. Um, and I love that. Like, you know, look, I'm old school. I love the sound of those Mar- Martin Birch albums. You know, I like a bit of reverb on there, a bit of atmosphere. Um, and I think it does, it, it differentiates it from the Maiden stuff as well. But I think vocally, like Bruce is, he's just incredible no matter what he does. I mean, it, it's to, to me, to me, the bridge could have been a Maiden song, but the verse could have been a U2 song. I don't know. I don't want people to freak out on that, but I'm just trying to say a very uh, big dynamic sort of chorus, right? And that note that he hits, it's not one of those falsetto notes that Rob Halford hits. It's a big note yeah. it's just this great he chose the right the note there yeah okay k man this is this is for you now production wise people yeah. have been complaining on on youtube there's a there's a version on youtube it feels compressed and a lot of hissing yeah you have the album show us the album i have the the, the single the seven single. seven inch single yeah yeah okay show I us that it. first i got it this this morning Okay, open it up. What do we got? Tomb Raider on the back with the uh, <laughs> Eternity Should Fail demo as well. And uh, so I can just show you a wee bit. So, um, nice. Beautiful. We sh- yeah, you know what? We should all get a copy just for doing this video, this unveiling. unveiling. So there's that too. It did say it came with a comic, but the, the page, comic pages are full. Double sided and they're built Beautiful. into the built built into the single. It's really nice. Really, really Love nice. It. Take out the album. Take out the album. Let's see this. What's this single EP or whatever they want to call it today? Yep. So it's they have the... We'll talk about the demo afterwards, okay? I'm not Magic. aiming if you heard the demo or not. Magic. Wow, look at that. Let's open her up. Crack her open there, buddy. Open her up. Or maybe you don't want to open it up because No, oh. no, this is that. Yeah, oh, not... look at this. Oh boy. Bring out the Iron Maiden Kleenex here. Okay, oh. here we go. <laughs> oh, there we are. <laughs> if Eternity should fail, the demo? Yep. That because, and just so everybody knows, if Eternity would fail, that was originally supposed to be on Bruce Dickinson's soul album, but it was on the Book album, of Souls. The, the album was originally supposed to be called If Eternity Should Fail. And uh, then Steve Harris heard the demo and wanted it for Maiden. That's mine. So- That's mine. Bruce took, Bruce took it to Steve and Steve said, oh, that'd be great for Maiden. And then they re-recorded it as, as Maiden. All right. Well, so tell me about, tell me about, well, we're going to talk about the demo after. Tell yeah. me about the production. Okay. A lot of complaints, like I mentioned on YouTube saying, oh man, there's a lot of hiss. I can't hear the vocals. I can't hear the mix. The mix is bad. Yeah. Is this a YouTube compression issue or well, the vinyl, when you put it on, you think, man, this is a great production. Well, I would say, you know, YouTube is famous for compressing, compressing the audio. You do get a sense of it feeling compacted. Uh, actually, the original version that went up online wasn't even the full song on YouTube. So buying the, the actual official single, it's gorgeous. They've put a lot of effort into the product, promoting promoting the album, promoting the story ahead. Bruce has obviously worked a lot with different artists and comic writers to produce this. Uh, it's well worth, I think it was £12 or something. It wasn't. It so wasn't so, so bottom line is, is there an uptick in sound? Is it a you're much always, better yeah, sound? Well, you're, well, you're always going to get, listening to the vinyl, when you put a vinyl on, that's what you're doing. You're actively listening to to the vinyl, you know. So yeah, there's a difference between what the compression that you hear when you're streaming a song digitally versus physically hearing the song, and that you're listening to on your turntable. Yeah, there's a difference. Ultimately, the the recording and, and the master is is still the same. You know what I mean? It's not it's not drastically different. But yeah, you can hear the fact that it is compressed and it is muddied. But those problems 
if you feel like the the mix is bad, for example, Roy Z recorded all the bass for this album. You can't really hear the bass, I would say, on Afterglow of Ragnarok. The bass isn't a, a strong component of the song. Because of that low-end guitar, you're not getting a lot of, of physical bass, like, say, you would from Steve Harris or Rex Brown or somebody. Uh, you, you don't physically get a lot of bass in that song, and I would say that's a... a a big criticism I've got. So, so how about this? Let's summarize this. What percentage better is it, the vinyl versus the better. YouTube version? I, I mean, it is give better. me a percentage. Twenty percent better? Ten percent better? No, it just depends on. <laughs> it depends on how, how you 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 feel about these things. If you don't care about production, you don't care about sound. You just want to hear the song. Then you're you're not you'll be happy with YouTube. You know what I mean? You'll be happy with Spotify. If you actively want to hear the parts and the uh, the elements that make up the song, then physically buy the the record. Physically buy right, the. There you go. So you're saying a twenty percent increase in quality for those those audiophile people. It's well right? worth it. Yeah, it's well worth. I'd say sixty percent. Right. All right, sixty. Oh my lord. Yeah. Okay, Amen. Did you see the video? <laughs> I certainly did, yeah. Um, All right, give me. Let, let's talk about this video now. I'm getting a lot of, I see a lot of comments there, and let me let me pull out some comments, and you could respond to these comments. <laughs> uh, Christian says new music is better appreciated without watching a video, as it quite a distraction, like a foreign movie with subtitles. Um, I've been seeing a lot of comments that oh the video is kind of cheesy uh i love the song but the video is kind of cheesy i mean what are your thoughts i mean to me i don't know to me bruce is giving his all not only is he creating a comic book and he's got a concept album but he's putting his effort into creating some sort of uh context of a a conceptual idea and okay it's not steven spielberg it's not star wars but man this guy i don't know man he's going on it's all passion so what do you think about the the video be yeah, well, it, it's hard. Look, it's hard to know. I, I don't know if any of you have watched the Chemical Wedding, the the movie. Um, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> yeah, I was about to we say, can I talk bought, about that after. <laughs> I was like, I bought it and watched it once, and I can't remember anything about it. Um, all the it wasn't anything. Um, yeah, like he look, the man throws his weight behind what he does and and turns it into a passion. Um, that's right. That's uh, right. Whether or not we get it, that's. <laughs> Uh, you know that's debatable i don't know a point on the video i suppose the last time that something like this happened was when we all saw the video for the writing on the wall with maiden and i don't know about the rest of you but i still love that video and i still think it's an integral part of it um with this i suppose he's introducing the entire concept and it's been in introduced slowly so there's guesswork going on and we're only getting a, a snippet of the story um Look, I don't read too much, and I watch the video, and I go, "Well, it's more about the music for me." But um, the video is not going to bother me too much either way. To be honest with you, did you I like just, it? Did you like it though? It it was fine, you know. Okay, what, what, That's all. Was it Aha's take on me? I don't know if it's going to be up there, <laughs> but but yeah, yeah I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was great. Go nothing, ahead, go ahead, Kevin. Okay, go. Uh, this is nothing new for Bruce. If you look at the video for Killing Floor. You look at the video for uh, Shoot All the Clowns. He's always having fun. He likes to to get in about it, and dress up and have ideas and, and get covered in gunk and and hire people to get dressed up as cy cyberpunk. Like, none of Sith, this. Star Wars, Sith Do Lords. Doctor Who. That, I think this is his way of making his own Doctor Who episodes, really. He loves Doctor Who, so that's... He's definitely got the British science fiction going there, you know. Um... Oh, yeah, that's true. Like, even, like, his first video was Tattoo Millionaire, and I can't remember. Somebody's going to mention it in the comments, but he worked with some famous director to do yeah, that. Yeah, Storm, and... Storm Ferguson from... Yeah, there you, there you go, boom. <laughs> I mean, that was hardly a, a, a masterpiece in video, but... It, it shows he was having fun and taking it very seriously from the start. And, and even to your point about the movie, the, it's the chemical wedding, the movie, correct? 
Yeah. Uh, that was the name of the movie. Was it called yeah. Chemical? I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, it was well, called I've Andrew seen. I, I I remember when I, when I first was gonna watch it. I go, I can't wait. Bruce Dickinson wrote the screenplay. I think did he direct it? I don't remember if he did or not. It was no, sort of like it, but he was involved, but heavily involved. I could have done that movie. You know what I mean with my camera, like going around the house. But I will say this. The guy's got passion, you know, you can't deny. And even though I'm, I think it's a great, it was a great script and a great idea that needed a Hollywood production. That's what I think. This is I think he had such a, such a hard time with the funding and different, went to different people. And ultimately yeah. the film didn't really turn out like he wanted, but it's just a case of you need uh, hundreds of thousands of millions of pounds to do it exactly how he would have wanted it. And I think even if he got it exactly how he wanted it, it would still be really off the wall. It would still be really weird and and have all these crazy concepts because that's that's what turns him on. You know, I mean, that's what he finds. And fun. I love that about yeah. him. I love that about him. You know, like to... I, I feel exactly the same as as Eamon. It's not. Is it something I'm I'm going to go back to? Probably not. Does it distract from the song? Maybe a little, um, but at the same time, I I'm looking forward to the story and the the concepts being told across the album. I don't really need, uh, videos to to do that. But for him, it's part of it's part of making. It's part of who he is, and that and that's making, part of why everybody loves him too. It, believe it or not, right? Mark Mitchell says video itself is pretty whack. The credits mention it comes together in six weeks. It looks more like six hours. I don't think mm -hmm. he understands mm -hmm. that Bruce has probably a lot of videos, and this is sort of like the 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 short version of what's to come, right? The commercial uh, or the trailer. It's quite and that's what Bruce probably did. Because I, I don't know what came first, whether it was the comic or the video, but it seems like the comic came first and Within the sing, if you buy the single, the the comic in the single is is based on, uh, some scenes in the video. It's really interesting, yes. and the animation so, yeah. and the the story and and the comic comes comes over a lot cooler than than maybe the the video with all the, the and, <laughs> and, and, I, and things. Yeah, yeah, and I should mention this: the comic is going to be released January 17th, 2024. That's the comic. Oh, the know. album is coming out March 1st, 2024. Right. This is a huge undertaking. He's got videos, he's got comic, he's got that conceptual theme for the album. Um, do you like concept albums in general, Eamon? I mean, are you looking forward to the concept or would you have rather have just different pieces and different songs? Do you know what? The more I the more I do this sort of thing, and the more the more I do you know reviews and stuff on Eon Music and even the interviews that I do, I real I'm a music guy. I play guitar. I honestly lyrics are almost the last thing that comes to my mind. That's just a a self. What's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> like a self evaluation. As much mm -hmm. as I love brave misplaced childhood, seventh son of a seventh son, Operation Mindcrime, The Wall, uh, Dark Side of the Moon. If they were singing those songs about separate entities, I don't think I would really care, you know. Um, but if it if it creates uh what's the word I'm looking for? I suppose a mood, that, a tone. Yeah, or a universe, I suppose, these days is That's more, it, more the universe. thing. Yeah, um yeah. I mean, I love the way, say, the chemical wedding has a call back to the song The Chemical Wedding towards the end. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, I love the beginning and end, you know, uh, Seven Deadly Sins on, on Seventh Son. When you get themes repeating, even uh, The Who in um, Quadrophenia, uh, Tommy, stuff like that. Uh, again, I'm, I'm talking about music, aren't I? So yeah. the story-wise is something that interests me lesser than the music, but that's just because I'm Titans. You know what? You bring a lot of good points in there. I'm, you know what the beauty of Bruce is? You could put on the Chemical Wedding, and even though it's a concept album, you don't really realize it's a concept album. Yeah, and I think that's a good thing. See, because... I'm, I'm, I'm the opposite to well, not the opposite, to Damon, but I, I do always find, or what I love about Bruce is his relationship to how he uses lyrics, how he uses language, uh, yeah. is always really inspired me uh 
he's always able to 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 mirror it with the music really well, and he writes in a way that is sophisticated and in a way that nobody else does, and especially in metal, you know what I mean. There's a there's a intelligence to his lyrics that always makes me smile when he's able to do it in a way that's creative. He, the, the, this is time. this is so important what you're saying. You know, he he knows how to use words to the point where you you could put it on and saying, and I this I said it before, you could put it on saying, wow, this is a concept album. Let me follow the concept. Or you could enjoy it as individual pieces of music. And that's kind of why Operation Mind Crime works too, because it could be enjoyed on two levels, either as a concept album or as individual songs, where some bands come out with concept albums and it's kind of like messy. Like they got like 20 intros and outros and it's just so messy that you, you're like, you kind of get turned off by the whole concept album thing. Or cheesy. Nostradamus. Or cheesy. <laughs> <laughs> Nostradamus. I think as well, you know, I discovered this when I was about 14 years old and the lyrics for Chemical Wedding, he's talking about panzer divisions burning in the mud and all these kind of things that evoke mysterious yes, uh, words, concepts. Yeah. And for me, at a time, the music is so so dark and so heavy. And you've yeah. got he's he's talking about Satan's left his killing for and what what does this all mean? You know, he's really good at, at making these worlds like feel theatrical like shakespearean almost mm. but in a way that that's still metal like it's still cool and and it's it's relevant and i always that's why that's what i like about bruce's stuff all right well, i'm gonna go read some comments and you guys could feel free feel free to sort of uh, add your mm -hmm. comments to the comments frank shanker says love bruce's new video single excellent production the guitar Sound tone reminds me of Dream Theater, Train of Thought, Ear of Iron Maiden. Uh, needs to get rid of Kevin Shirley. I know <laughs> I know the boss is loyal to Kevin and replace Shirley with Roy Z as the next producer. Here are my thoughts. I agree with everything you said, Frank, but I don't think they should put bring in Roy Z. Let Roy Z be part of Bruce's world or his universe because that's what separates Maiden. And, and you guys, would you agree with that? Yeah, I think there's a tendency, you know, immediately people say, oh, I wish Maiden were doing this, or oh, this is much better than Maiden, uh, I like this more than Maiden. The whole the whole reason Bruce has a solo career at all was to, to step away from Maiden, to, to establish his own, to, to go near sounds and ideas that Maiden, that Steve Harris felt that weren't appropriate for Maiden. So... Only through Bruce do, do, doing things that aren't like Maiden is the reason why we have this back catalogue at all. And I'm a diehard Maiden fan. I love everything Maiden do. But the, there's excitement in getting things from Bruce Dickinson's back catalogue that you wouldn't, that you might not get yeah, from, that's a, that's a, from Maiden that's at right. all. Yep, yep, yep. All right. Tom says... Tom DeMond says, I like it very heavy and dark, especially the main riff, maybe a little too dark. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Still amazing at his age, like Rob Halford can still sing. I'm going to go look at some negative. I was pretty shocked at the negatives, Eamon. Yeah. I was pretty shocked. There were some people saying, ah, it's okay. Ah, it's all right. Now, you wouldn't see these comments on the video itself where Bruce was releasing it. You would see them on other YouTube channels, other social media, and people are I'm like completely shocked. I mean, what do you want to hear? Ruh, ruh, ruh. Like, what do you, what what do you want to hear? I mean, I did read that someone said they wished that uh, Bruce Dickinson would do some growling, and it made me laugh because you're never going to you're never going to get that from Bruce. And I think if he was to try and do it, it would come off as disingenuous. It would come off as ridiculous. You know what I mean? Bruce Dickinson's not Phil Anselmo or or. Uh, Corpse grinder for, for, yeah, for yeah, Campbell yeah. Corpse, you know. Uh, uh, all right. But Abigail says, this is Abigail, she, her note was, meh, wasn't overly excited. What, what, do you, what do you say to that, Amen? Like, meh, wasn't, would you say meh, was, weren't overly well, I, excited? I think the difference really is that there's a whole concept there. First off, like I wanted, honestly, when I got to the video, I was like, how long is it before this bloody thing starts? The thing's like eight minutes long, the video, because yeah. you've got this, 
atmospheric intro and you've got an outro. Good point. It's because it's introducing a concept and a story. So it's more than just can I play with madness? Boom, three minutes, you know? Um, and so in a way I get it that people are like, oh, you know, because it, it's building a whole thing. And that's almost where you get a chunk out of a concept album, don't you? Which is what's going on here. So yes, it's less immediate. But that doesn't mean I don't like it. I find it interesting as to whether how much of of this album even is a concept album. We don't even know that yet, you know. No, no, no. It is a concept album. Like, like right. Ju- but my thing, Bruce Dickinson with concept albums again. Chemical Wedding is a concept album. How how much is he actually going to lean into? Is it really going to be like King Diamond with characters and plain female voices and? No. Well, okay, okay. Well, so, we okay. Now it's a good segue into actually. I want to read one more comment here. Uh, John says, John Goldstein says, I like the main riff, but not much else. Pretty underwhelming to me. It's no Book of Thel or King of Crimson. Now, I don't know about that comment. I was, pr- I'm going to tell you, I was blown away by this song. To me, the way he's singing that chorus, and I'll get back to this, it's yeah. dynamic, it's dramatic. I agree with the chorus. This is what's missing in music today. Actual singing. The guy is singing. I think it depends on your perspective. If you're coming at it... My perspective is always the right perspective. (laughs) That's number one. That's rule number one, okay? Like So, for example, I'm quite conflicted about it. as, as As a fan of Bruce Dickinson, I'm over the moon that Bruce Dickinson's back. I'm over the moon that Bruce Dickinson's making new music. As someone who is a diehard fan of Bruce Dickinson's solo work and who's been waiting for this half my life, literally half my life. Because <laughs> uh, half his life he's been waiting. 18 years, when you think, how old are you? I'm 34. Oh, it's half your life. It really is half yeah. your life. Me, it's a quarter it's of my life. life. Eamon's about a quarter. <laughs> so for me, uh, Turn Your Souls came out in 2005 and it was able to to provide me with the soundtrack of being a teenager, you know, and it, it was so different from the popular stuff that was out at the time that I could really sink my teeth into it. So if I'm looking at it from a diehard Bruce Dickinson fan, I want this new single to blow away it what did, but it did. It blew me away. I don't know. Maybe so, your expectations were a little the, higher. Uh, so does it have the impact of abduction? No, it doesn't. It doesn't right. have that killer uh, Bruce swinging for the fences. I cried. Uh, hmm? I cried. I cried. It was so good. Well, I mean, I understand that as well. Like, I can understand people feeling like joy about the fact that they've get they get anything from Bruce at all so it depends on how you're looking at it you know uh, I, I know people who feel exactly the same as you I, I'm somewhere in the middle because do I think this is one of the best songs Bruce Dickinson's ever put out no I don't think after Lord Ragnarok is if you look at the whole I mean if you compare it I mean you don't have to you know what I mean if you take this for what just for what it is then it's great you know what I mean Bruce is back and it's new heavy metal, and but also it's very similar to, for example, something Black Label Society might do. In terms I don't of, know. No, no, no like, don't even go there. Terms, don't even go in terms there. Of the riffing, don't go there. In terms of just the riff, or or like the mood of the song is very like nineties Black Sabbath, Tony Martin, Virtual Death type of thing. You know, so, I, I, perso- so, I personally so, think... So my argument would be... Is it's a continuation of this. It's a continuation so, of this. Is it, though? Is it? Is, there's no, the only thing that, that I can really criticise is it's nothing ex- excitingly new, apart from the chorus. All right, all right. If, if, if the, hey, look, you're entitled to your opinion. That's cool. I mean, if that's how you and felt, Damon. I, I, I mean, to be fair... I would say some of these riffs were recorded a decade ago. He's been working yeah. on this for a right. long time. Right. Um, so they probably, probably were, yes, yes. They yeah, so it probably were, does yes. tie in and, and, and literally tie into tyranny of souls, etc. And and I I don't think that's a bad thing, really. I think it does sound like a progression, accident of birth, 
chemical wedding, turning of souls, and now this. And uh, I I love that um that continuity that uh, yeah that feels like, that like you said before it, it feels like he's established a signature sound with Roy Z and you're getting that he's delivering on what you expect heavy metal from Bruce mm -hmm. and I think yeah. that's the an exciting thing as well a lot of people don't know about Bruce's back catalogue and only know him from Maiden so. This is also bringing Bruce Dickinson to a, to a wider audience to say, "Here I am with my own brand of heavy metal," and it's that's that's a good point. That's a, that's a good point. Um, the track listing that was also released, yeah. guys. I think that I sent it to you. Did you see them, Eamon? Did I send it to you? I'm not sure if I saw. Uh, it. I saw it. Yeah, I got I got the press release. Yeah. And the only comment I have to say about this is we have uh, Afterglow is about five minutes. Uh, Resurrection Man is about six minutes. Eternity has failed is six. Point fifty nine seconds, which is basically seven minutes. Shadow of the Gods is seven minutes, and Sonata, Immortal Beyond, is nine minutes and fifty one seconds. I think what's happened, and I think Eamon, you said this. He has, and and you said this too, Kamen. It's eighteen years. They've had time to listen to the songs, re-listen, to recalibrate the songs sit with them, listen to them in the stereo, listen to them in the car, listen to them everywhere, sit with them, change them, modify them. That's why I think this is going to be a strong album. And probably the riffs are 10 years old, but they're being recalibrated. They're being, you know, fixed up. The mixes are being changed. So, this is going to be a long song. There's a lot of long songs on this album. You know, it's not going to be your, can I play with madness here? Boom, boom, no. boom. We're in, we're out. But this is the thing. Bruce delivers what what he wants. If anything, the criticism that people have for Maiden kind of comes from the idea that Bruce Dickinson wants to do the kind of songs that Bruce Dickinson wants to do. So you're not going to get your radio songs. You're going to get this. These are songs that exist to serve the whole of the project. Yeah, with with the exception of Fingers in the Wounds is 3 minutes and 39 seconds. That might be your Can I Play With Madness song. I don't know. I don't know. Eamon, did you hear the demo for If Eternity Should... should? Uh, oh, my God. I just lost my track. My If Eternity Should Fail. Uh, no, I haven't. And, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go out on a limb here and say, Roy Z co-wrote that song. <laughs> uh, that's That's got to be a certainty there. Um, no, I haven't heard it yet, but I'm looking forward to uh, giving that a spin. Yeah, I mean, I don't know that K-Man weigh in on that, but from my perspective, it's a demo. Yep. It's a demo. It's what it is. It's basically, you know, the vocals seem very loud in the mix. But I must say, I like, all, all credit to Roy Z, who has written an absolute uh, bitching song. I mean, you know you know it from Maiden. Like, Maiden took, like, bring us up the, the demo, bring us up to the slaughter. Maiden took it and madeified it. But all the bones, even all the, the maiden-y things about that song yep. are in Roy Z's demo. So... It's it's interesting. It's very interesting to hear it because it just goes to show how much effort Roisey and, and Bruce has put into that song uh, originally. It, it, it's a pretty clever way, right? It's kind of like, hey, this is the song that we wrote before it went and made a find it. You know, like Steve yep. took it. It's to, pretty to nice. That, to think that he's also doing another version of it, which is he's rewritten it again and called it Eternity Has Failed. Uh, just because he loves it that much, and I must say that that song is that good. Like when I, I was, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be honest with you. It was never my favorite Maiden song. You know, it, it was okay. I love it because it's a Bruce song. That's why I love it. Like when you hear Maiden play it and Bruce sing it, he, he all the things that he's singing about are going to be in the Mand Mandic Mandic project. All mm -hmm. those elements of of good and evil, like humanity succumbing to sin and the end of the world, all that kind of stuff is is what this album's going to be about. And um, Bruce is, is passionate about it, and he's passionate about whoever Necropolis is and uh, the, the effect he has on, on the world. It's, it's interesting. It's a good way to get us out of here. Amen. final words. Final words. I just realized that yesterday, 25 years ago, I saw Bruce Dickinson in Glasgow in the G2. So it's been 25 years since I saw him live. 
I'm looking forward to the tour more than the album. I'm very much looking forward to the album. I was they... ten you I think I was ten when when that was. <laughs> so I've got tickets to see him in May. This is the first time I'll ever see Bruce Dickinson. And it's got to be in the Barrowlands. It's got to be amazing. All right. As we get out of here, show us this single once again, came in. Show it. Yeah, it's... Like a like a supermodel, please. Like a super uh, uh, like this. And I will do right. this. This will make a good thumbnail later on. Show us the album cover. Yep. I want to see your face. There it is. There it is. <laughs> Serious face. What do you got, Eamon? You got anything? Hang on. Let me get something. <laughs> Stay there. <laughs> there he is on the back showing off his new physique. <laughs> All right, everybody who's watching, just comment, tell us. There, there you, you go. Oh, you got all that sec. Hold on, hold oh, on. Go, 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 go. There you go. It's this, whatever it's called, Solo Works box set. Wow. Nice. All right, guys. Thank you so much. Cheers. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll talk soon, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.